live show for you guys. And if you're turning up to watch the rerun, watch this right through if you're interested in DIY bottle gardening systems, saving money, and how you connect this to your worm farm to get really optimum results. Now, this is called a vertical veggie bottle garden. You grow mostly leafy greens and things in it. So you can grow strawberries, all different types of leafy greens, you know, uh, Asian greens, uh, and they grow absolutely really, really good and super cheap to make, and you just need some compost. And these were made, this was invented around about, I think maybe 13 years ago or even longer, by a man called Willem van Cotten. And he's a really special guy because he invented this not for himself, but for those who were really struggling um, with, you know, with money and they couldn't afford to grow their own food and things. So he created these systems where they could just recycle things around them and uh, change their lives. And this went right through uh, Africa and Asia. And then all of a sudden it took off in places like Facebook. And he was one of the first person, people I knew to have over a million followers. Uh, and he had it in, in his Facebook page. And a really lovely guy. And I've spoke to him a few times sort of just online. Um, I never got a chance to go over to Europe to meet him. I really wish I did. And in some ways, uh, he's an inspiration to me. And what I want to do today is talk about uh, this bottle garden here. Um, I've made them myself and used them. And uh, in the early days when I started Marty's Garden, and you might even, if you're, if you're keen to have a look, the videos are pretty bad, but you type in Marty's Garden, vertical bottle garden or recycle bottle garden, a whole lot of things turn up. But as I said, <laughs> the productions are pretty average. Uh, it was when I first got started, software was bad, cameras were terrible audio and all that was really hard. There was no YouTube stuff around to teach us how to do that. We just got in and did it. But, um, you know, building these things uh, was absolutely brilliant. And I just saved up bottles. I was pretty broke at that time, at that, those times as well. And so uh, it was really great to actually build one. And I just mostly just grew lettuce in mine and um, some strawberries and things. Now there's a few different ways to do it. Um, this is just one of them. And what I'll do is now is I'll just pull up uh, the chat here. People don't know that actually I was going to run uh, a live show uh, today. And um, I was actually, I've been just running them through the week, 9.30 a.m. Sydney, Australia time. So I haven't been, uh, I didn't let anyone know that this was coming up. And so who knows uh, if anyone's even going to show much. Uh, today or they're even interested in it, but I want to get this content out there because I believe it's actually they're absolutely brilliant and You can so they actually stack on top of each other and so if you build some way to uh, To put them on top of each other and then you just put the lids on and you drill some little holes or poke some holes in the bottom You can use a little heat gun to poke, poke a hole in the bottom and stack them on top of each other like that And so you water from the top now the original ones actually had a water bottle in the top so that one's got plants uh, in the top but what you do is you actually have one that's a water bottle that sits at the top and you fill that up and that just drips down slowly onto the plants and then down below you'd have another one that would actually catch uh, the water systems there's lots of different ways they made I'm not saying anything's better than the other like that one could have a trough down the bottom that's catching the water but the water does flow out so you need to understand that and you can recycle it especially if you're very low uh, in water so and what we're going to do we'll talk about this uh, sort of connecting it to the worm farms as well and as I said this live show was just uh, sporadically made I just got everything done today had a good time this morning going out and uh, to the markets and uh, yeah just been sort of working at home and thought hey I love this concept let's keep getting it out so there we go, uh, a sporadic live show. I wasn't gonna be here, but here I am uh, testing out my camera, new software, and I should be coming in nice and clear on the sound. So there's Michael there. G'day, mate. Uh, good to see you here, and uh, thanks for coming. And uh, Deb, uh, quite su and su what a surprise. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, as I said, it was just a sporadic live show. I just was going through some content, looking at doing some research, and then I thought, you know what, I need to keep pulling up this bottle garden stuff. And uh, there's, you know, 
there's some videos that go right back and a lot of content sort of in Pinterest. The Facebook stuff's really disappeared and that's where it really exploded about 13 years ago. And as I was saying, you just need to have a way to uh, put a board on top um, and hold them up and then you stack them on top of each other and then just drill the holes. And uh, what I used to do is actually just build them and slide them into one another. So uh, those ones, there's a bit of a gap in between and, and slide them into another and I'd cut, a, cut the side of the bottle out. Uh, I think I might have brought a video out with that um, not so long ago where it shows the side. So you're cutting, I'll show you what I mean. So this is like the bottle stacking on top, top of each other like this and each one slides in and then you cut a hole off oh, so it goes like that and so you cut a hole in the side there and then that one slides into the top like that and like that so and it drips down into each one and they just slide in each one you put a hole and the top one is your water bottle so you fill that up with water you slot that one in top so it slots in a couple little holes and then you put your dirt in there like that and you cut a hole in there and a plant falls out the side and so that's um it's just hard to find a really good image like i said the content is so old and something i can pull up that's really good um that you can see on my computer right so uh so if i can see it well on my computer in my software you guys can see it well so i'll just go over it again so you stack them like that on top of each other your top ones your water so you fill that full of worm tea worm liquid and that drips down into there through the hole down there into there and you have your soil here and you cut a hole there and it falls the plant falls out the side it's really good for like leafy greens strawberries things like that that are shallow rooted plants and you, if you really want to hang on to the bottles longer, what I did was I wrapped tape around the bottom and um, just to stop the blue-green, the algae from showing up and uh, just covered it around with a brown paper tape and uh, that worked. And I, I used them um, for a couple of years, the same one. Uh, so, and you can build big ones, small ones, and they, because of the weight, they hold themselves down on each other really good. And you can see the water in there, so it just drips out through the bottom there right which is really really cool and um, as you can see if I put that like that that stacks onto there if the camera gets it and stacks onto there like that and then just runs down into the system so really cool way to um, to save money and make sure you're using food grade bottles and then when they start you know getting a bit old throw them out get some new ones uh, and go from there so there's heaps of content like old stuff uh, online, but if you go into Pinterest, that should come up and show up. Like I said, the old Facebook stuff. Yeah, and you can go over to um, you still got that desertification link that I gave you on the other bot, the other uh, video that I made. Uh, you can go through there, and he's got other vertical bottle bottle gardening photos and things in there for you to look at, and he, a lot of blogging. So he's a blogger, so he wrote a lot of content, uh, all in English, and this is second language. So yeah, you love the idea, Deb. Uh, it's pretty cool. I love it too. And how I've got the sound working now <laughs> on this camera here. And um, this is the, the new uh, Sony ZV-1 camera. And it's it's better than my webcam. But look at this. When I bring it forward, it shows the bottle and me. I disappear in the background. Like, just looks so much more professional. Right? Look at that. Like, if I just get rid of this for a second, I'll show you. I won't play around too much, but I just want to show you what I mean. So look, look, there I am, and see, I can show the product or I can show something that I want to show here on the computer and it really, it really comes out really nice and, and it works really good at night as well. So yeah, stoked about that. Let's get this back side by side so we can look at it really good. And um, we'll keep pulling this across. A few people starting to roll up now. So uh, if you've come in a little bit late, we're talking about uh, why this bottle garden system uh, has just been has disappeared and just been forgotten about and be, now with you know the economy and our money and things like that like I went to uh, sh shopping today to the markets and things had all gone up even there guys um, I went to buy some pizza he said oh no cheese has gone up so much more per kilo <laughs> the old pizza man that I've been going to see for 25 years or something like that <laughs> 
Uh, and he still gave me a discount, the nice guy, because he loves my daughter. But um, yeah, everything's going up, and we're just not getting um, the value of our dollar. Fortunately, our salaries aren't going up at the same time uh, with this inflation. So we can do things like this. We basically just need uh, the compost, right? So we just need the bottles, compost, or a potting mix, good potting mix. Uh, some worm casts if you're worm farming. I highly recommend you become a, a worm wrangler and then do the course inside here, inside the YouTube channel, uh, and learn all about worm farming, get it up running really quick, because this is be your top bottle where you put your liquids in from your worm farm, and it just runs down through that vertical garden, liquid fertilizing everything, and then it gets caught in the bottom, bottom bottle, which is this one, another one down below, and then you just, which will sit, yeah, it sits like that, and you don't have any holes in the bottom one. And you can use anything in the bottom one, actually a bigger bottle or whatever, as long as it catches the liquid down below. And then we just put it back and put it back and put it and every and it runs through the, the, the compost as well. So it's leaching through the compost and then grabbing out more nutrients and we put it back, put it back. We can put it back through uh, quite a few times. And then when we're done, we just go and put it on another plant. So we're just recycling back through, back through, you know, we can even go and pour it back on our worm farm if we're low on water. And, you know, in Australia here, obviously, we've been in flood on the East Coast and stuff, but, you know, we had drought before, not so long before that, and bushfires. So think about it, you know, like, uh, they have turned my water off a few times when I've been here, um, you know, in, when I said when I've been here, I mean, in Australia, yeah. Okay, let's get this across. Yeah, as I said, Mel, I just want to make try and make these shows better and better as I can. Um, I believe I'm getting a really nice image up here and uh, this really helps for, you know, the live stuff's about, ex you know, it's the experience and that's what we want to get across. We really want to get this community experience across but then some people don't have time for the live and they want to watch the rerun and I'm trying to give the best sort of um, production that I can over time to build them up and people will watch them longer and stuff like that. So, Let's go into some questions. If you've got any questions about this uh, bottle garden system, as I said, there's a few different ways to make it, and we can talk about that. Um, it's a bit hard for me to pull them all up. That only allows me to show one share one screen at the at time. I'm going to learn how to share two screens eventually. Um, but yeah, the bottle garden, and this is just a small little one. So you could grow like um, like a baby leaf microgreens out of the side or something like this. Like a rocket, you know, rocket arugula basil grow out of this, no problem. All right, let's keep going there. Uh, how big's the hole in the cap? So you need to drill one quite big, good size one. I used to get like put three or four small ones in there. As long as it runs out nicely, doesn't pour out too quick. Um, you know, like a about a good nail size, I found it worked really well. And it doesn't matter if it just drips slowly because. Um, you know, just that consistent little drip running down every now and again until it runs to the bottom uh, will keep the plant moist and stuff like that. And because it's plastic in there, uh, it works a bit like a little terrarium as well because what we're doing is we're cutting a hole out of the side. That's how I do it, let the plant grow out of the side. So there's a lot of moisture uh, trapped in these uh, too, but the air's going through. Just make a really good, a really good hole, not too small uh, on the side because you want that air going in and a nice big, Nice big hole in the bottom, like good sized nail that you'd use to nail a fence or something, uh, would work quite well. Uh, but yeah, you can use a little heat, like a heat gun or anything like that. All right, so let's go in and, and uh, you've got any questions, guys, uh, fire away. We've got 16 people turn up on a Saturday night. Unbelievable, I didn't think there'd be hardly any. Uh, but this is better than watching Netflix, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, I'd rather talk with you guys and chat with you guys and uh, and get this information out there for you all. And if anyone wants to leave a super chat, please do so. They're available in the, the chat box down below and any small amount just helps, it all adds up. Uh, let's keep moving from. Hi Marty, I have a variation on this. Three pot plants fixed to a board from a pallet and hung on the nail on the top rail of a fence. Spaced a lot, yeah, that's a great idea, hi. Huh? Like if you just pots on top of each other. Other ones like the, the inventions of this that come on over time as it become more trendy was these bags that sat above each other as well and you can buy them and they sort of like, they're like a same material as you as a grow bag and they sit on the wall and then it just sort of runs down in between. They're pretty good and you can pick them up 
uh, quite cheaply and they just fit onto the side. So yeah, onto a pallet, uh, that's a really good way to do it uh, for sure. Just remember you need to catch that, uh, excuse me, catch that liquid uh, down below. To me that's really important to be under, understand to keep recycling uh, that nutrient and that liquid. And remember that um, some plants, you know, like just you just need to do it so there's enough moisture trapped uh, in the in the compost area uh, down below, and that it doesn't dry out. And then the plants will grow absolutely fine. If it's if you're doing it too much, you don't want the leaves wet all the time because then you create rot. So you just want to do it enough so there's enough moisture in the, in the compost or the potting mix that you're using is nice and wet. And if you've got some worm casts around. Uh, you can use that to make a tea, and you can also put that around the roots when you're doing uh, the planting. So yeah, if you've got um, a question, please put a big Q uh, next to the question. That's what we try and do here, just so I can, um, sometimes when it's really busy in here, a lot of people chatting, uh, it's hard for me to see what's going on. So thank you, Elizabeth, for doing that. We salute you <laughs> with the big Q. So you need another hole to let the water flow. Yes. So I'll just I'll just bring it, show you again, and um, you know I don't want to. It's okay to to repeat this a few times. So if you look at the image, they're all on top of each other, and like I said, there's many different ways to do it. This is just how I how Willem shown me how to do it. So they that goes and slides inside. There's a nice big hole inside, not a pin hole, like a big nail hole inside, and um, and so yeah, the water's got to come down from the top. Drips down, here's the compost down in there. You've cut a hole into here where the plant's falling out. Nice big hole. And don't worry if you get a few wrong because these, these bottles are everywhere. You can test and trial until you get it right. And then, you know, your top one is filled with water, your liquid, and the bottom one is to catch. And so you might have three or four in between, one at the bottom, one at the top, which end up being about six. And that's quite a fair bit of height you can't even see that uh, on there so hopefully that's uh, sort of explaining it to you and um, hello there sharing is key hello uh, thank you for coming in to the show and Q what's the best thing to hold the bottles I can't see what it is um, so what I did was when I was living in my apartment up on the veranda they ha I had a vertical rail already so I was just absolutely tying it around and using the vertical rail as a back pole. Um, some people use like pallets, things like that. But if you've got like, um, say, a veranda coming out, I think your place, Deb, has something coming out, some type of eave, and you have an, uh, a pole dropping down, you can just put it on the sun side and just connect it to the side of the pole like that. And so it just wraps, you just tie it around to the house pole coming down off the veranda area or something. So other than that, you'd need to have some type of uh, like a, something to hold it up that you can tie it to. But that's just how I did it. Look, I am not the perfect DIY guy. I am absolutely hopeless at DIY. Well, I'm not hopeless, but I'm, I'm not great. And so if I can build one, you can, can quite easily. You just need some type of stand. You could even get like a, uh, like a really good uh, tomato steak, a really good strong one, whack that in the ground, right? Really so it's nice and tight, and then tie your bottles to the side like that. That would be a really good idea. Uh, who knows, maybe I might even have a go at doing one uh, here if, if um, people really like the concept and we decide to keep uh, rehashing it and maybe even create a challenge for it, you know. Uh, be good to do some challenges and uh, see what everyone else does there. Hey, Rhiannon, great to see you there. Thanks for coming in and uh, checking out the bottle gardens. If anyone's coming a little bit later, we are talking about why we should bring this back. It was invented by Willem van Cotten, uh, the amazing professor in uh, in Europe. I think he's in Belgium, I believe. And yeah, you know, like this is such a great way to grow food. Use a food grade bottle and uh, save a lot of money. You just need you some compost. And if you've got, got a worm farm around, even better, because we're mostly just growing leafy greens in it, which is more of a nitrogen, looking more of a nitrogen feed which uh, most worm farms is more of a nitrogen sort of liquid, uh, especially if we're doing feeding manures and, um, you know, basically food scraps and stuff like that. Uh, you know, we can fine tune it to produce other other things, but generally overall, it's more of a nitrogen one. Okay, let's keep going here. And 
I have a square piece of lattice. Yes, anything that can stand up, it's not going to blow over, can sit vertical, I think would work uh, really good. So we've got like 23 people turned up on a Saturday night. Who would have thought? My analytics says that uh, on YouTube that Saturday night is very quiet and uh, my viewership is low at this time. <laughs> So there you go. Thanks everyone for coming in. If you love the concept and you're loving what I'm bringing out here on my shows and uh, these lives, please give me a thumbs up. It lets YouTube know that I'm sharing value here. It has like a share out, like in a share algorithm, like a value algorithm. And that works a lot with a thumbs up and how many people are commenting and being involved um, in the feed and stuff like that. So Wonderful to see uh, you all here. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot uh, for coming. We're looking at why this bottle garden has been forgotten and talking about resurrecting it. And as I said, in places like Pinterest, um, there's heaps of different ways to do it. You can go out, you can type in will, um, desertification blog and um, that will come up and that's linked in one of the other bottle garden videos. You can check that out from there. Um, I don't want to link out to that on every video because uh, it affects uh, my overall rating from YouTube if I link out too much to those places. But um, yeah, you can find it uh, there. And we have another comment here from Quinn. Happy to be here with you, Marty. Thanks for spending your time to spread the info. Well, thanks for coming in, uh, Quinn. Um, as I said, I'd rather be here than watching Netflix at the moment and run, you know, a, a live show for, you know, we might we usually go for about an hour and have a chat with you guys and who knows who can turn up different times of the world when we have different times on because sometimes I'm doing it in the morning, uh, 9.30 Sydney, Australia time uh, through the weekdays and a lot of people are asleep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And, you know, other people are night owls and they just stay up all night. So they still watch it. Hi from Scotland. It's 8.30 a.m. 8.30 in the morning. 8.30 a.m. Well, cheers to you, Mr. In Scotland there. It's 7.37 p.m. here right now. I think I'm about 30 seconds ahead of you guys too. And here we go. Uh, for some reason, I can only see me in the chat. Oh, there's others here. Um, you might need to maybe refresh the page, uh, Deb. Um, could be a YouTube issue there. Alison Gilbert, did you find you have to switch up the order of the bottles after the crop had finished? So the nutrients in the top will be similar to the nutrients in the bottom. It's quite a long question. I'm just going to read that out and break it down again. Did you find you have to switch up the order of the bottles after the crop had finished? So the nutrients in the top will be similar to the nutrients in the bottom. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what you mean, but what I was saying in, in, the, in the video is you actually have one that's in the top, so they build a little bit differently how I do them, how Willem showed me how to do them, and that slots in there, the top one, and the top one's just your water bottle, and then it would run down through, and your bottom one's a catchment water bottle, and they sit on top of each other and just hole in the lid, hole out the side that you cut there, um, and your plant falls out the side. So the nutrient just runs down, you just put it back in top. So you cut the top open like that. So that's open. You just pour in there a jug or something. So you make sure you put it, you know, not too high. So you got to stand up too high and uh, you just fill it up. And um, it's the nutrients pretty much the same right through. And then once you've done it a few times, you go and pour on another plant or put it in another worm, put it on your worm farm. Uh, it's you know designed like that to recycle and save water because uh, when they were first coming out in Africa they were in severe drought there um, yeah and so uh, the system is it's it's simple but very very clever the way it works and um, I wasn't so much into worm farming I was worm farming then but we weren't really discussing it with Willem uh, at the time and worm farming really wasn't, it was known off, but it wasn't a big thing. And um, people weren't really following it uh, much in those days. But that's what I recommend, is you're pouring the worm juice in the top and you're making it like a work, like a weak tea. And you can, uh, if you don't have a worm farm, you can use other uh, liquid nutrients uh, in there. You know, you can even, if you wanted to even go hydroponic, you can do it that way with uh, the rocks and gravel and stuff and pour the hydroponic in. It's still, you know, you get a plant that's still gonna be better than what you're going to get out of the shop because um, you're picking it and harvesting it uh, right there and then. So it's still got all the essential oils and everything in there. Okay, let's 
go to the comments again. Let me back up. Do the plants in the in the top bottles get more nutrients? Ah, oh, or take out more nutrients? No, because they're all full of compost, right? So even if you're doing it in a hydroponic system, the hydroponics is going to run all through and it's going to run right through till it gets to the end. Now the first couple of times if your compost is dry, then it's going to take a few more goes. But we want to be planting more using moist compost. Now the reason why we can just use compost and and uh, you know it doesn't have to be potting mix so much because you know, the bottles aren't so big, that doesn't compact down and stuff. We're just growing small like microgreens, baby leaf, uh, lettuce, uh, strawberries, things like that have shallow rooted things and we put a bit of tape around the bottom, around, the, around here to uh, stop the blue green algae, that's what I used to do, just brown tape, so cheap. As I said, I was really quite broke at that time and um, you know, like Karen was about two years old, taking care of her on my own, um, yeah, and it was, it was tough times, I remember, but you know, because we were growing some food, uh, it seemed to, you know, get by a bit better than than others um, and it was a good learning experience yeah so thumbs up thank you Kushcraft I appreciate that if anyone else wants to give me a thumbs up now it lets YouTube know that you're getting value and you're enjoying the video and uh, by getting involved in the comments uh, as well uh, and also just saying hello and stuff like that also lets it know that uh, the comments uh, that this lives active and that people will start rolling in we've got 18 people still here <laughs> so that's pretty cool on a Saturday Australian night um, as I said YouTube says to me that there's it says some of my viewers are on here but wow it's pretty cool so Deborah B says worked it out I was on FB and moved over to YouTube now I see everyone in chat Oh, cool. Well, that's interesting that you say that, uh, Deb, because I am live streaming into uh, into Facebook and Twitter, uh, but uh, it probably show it will show me apparently Facebook comments. But um, yeah, I don't really, I don't really know. Uh, to be honest, I haven't really trialed that uh, as of yet. But thanks for letting me know. That's good to know. How long does it take for the water to run from top to bottom? Depends on how many that you've built. Excuse me, itchy eye there. <laughs> Depends on how many you've, you've built, how thick it is, how big your bottles are and stuff like that. But generally, it's pretty quick, like a couple of minutes. First time, uh, obviously, it started, started sort of like work. Get the compost. If the compost's got some dry spots, then it's going to capture some moisture. And then it's going to slowly drip down sort of through the day as well because the moisture is locking in and just slowly moving through. So um, at the first bit you'll get a big lot come through and then slowly uh, through the rest of the day. And remember you have the, this one's the bottom one here and what I used to do is I just sit that on the bottom like that uh, and the, the, last, the top one would have a plant in it and this would capture all the water again. And so I would just pull that out and then just pour that back in the top again and then just whack it down the bottom again. By the time you pour it in and put it down, you've got plenty of time to put this one down the bottom. Now you don't have to have one of these in the bottom. You can have a small bucket, anything like that. You can have a trough like what these guys have got. I'm pretty sure there's a trough there. But if we look at the image, um, mostly the things, you can see some herbs and stuff like that, like coming out of the right here. They look, they're definitely, um, that, that's definitely like a, a shallots or a, a, you know, like a, a what do you call it, like an onion green or something like that. Uh, yeah, spring onions, uh, things like that. You know, you can do, actually, the spring onions that you buy from the shop, you know, like the big thick ones, um, they work really good. So once you've finished with them and you've gone right to the bottom and you save the butt and the root, you just put stick them in, man. And I'm telling you, you get heaps of harvest again. You'll get two or three, maybe even four harvests at normal time that you get from buying the spring onions and just recycling them over. Uh, that is just such a game changer for saving money. Like, costs they only cost you. So they cost you three bucks, but you use them three times over. That's a, a ten dollar saving, you know, straight off the rack. And um, you know, then you've only got so instead of buying them once a week, you're buying them once a month because you're just putting them straight in the bottle garden, sticking them in. They regrow back up again. They love growing in those systems. Like I just start them in water. Again, I just stick them straight in water and then just bang and they throw a root and then I just stick them in the pot or in the somewhere in the garden or in a bale, you know, and they grow again. But this way, uh, pretty cool. Yeah, let's keep moving. Do, do, do. 
you've been harvesting them for months. What have you been harvesting? I'm sorry, I, I might have missed something uh, there, uh, Deb. But what we so uh, you can see on this one, like the far side, maybe uh, there's not much going on there, but maybe they were just planted out just recently, you know. And it looks like there could be a succession planting going because it's bigger at the right end and lower at the left end. So they've obviously planted out this end, which I think is a really good way to do it. I think that's a really good idea is to plan out one side. So if you've got a couple there going and then, you know, succession. So this one's planted later. Then you're harvesting off here and on your right side. And then if you're looking, it would be on the left side over there. Uh, there your new ones are coming through. And so seasonal stuff, you know, you look at your Asian greens, like your bok choy and stuff like that, uh, when, when it's going into the cooler seasons and your lettuce and things like that more. So when it's really hot, uh, you can grow things like kangkong, different Asian greens and things that come that handle uh, the summer heat. But really, it's more for that, um, depending on your climate and where you are, everyone around the world watching at different times, right? So if you're in like a UK climate, you could probably grow these uh, all year round. If you're up near where you are, uh, Deb, you probably might be somewhere more where you'd wait um, until things sort of, yeah, our spring onions, yeah, they're awesome, until things sort of cool down uh, just a little bit. But you can, if you use a bigger bottle, you can do determinant tomatoes, right? And so you'd use the larger two litre bottles and you stack four on top of each other and you can grow determinant tomatoes uh, out of those. So the determinant tomatoes are the ones that they only grow small and bushy and you look for the real compact ones. Uh, that some of them, There's some ones that only grow about this big and they just covered in fruit and stuff like that. Do your research on this. Some really cool ones are out and uh, I've grown oh, so many different varieties of mine. I just love them. And uh, yeah, I'd love to have just all different types of tomatoes <laughs> in my backyard if I could at the time. Uh, so yeah, look into those. Um, and there's some like Asian channels and stuff like that that, that do those. And with Kang Kong as well, um, I've had success with that, uh, growing the, the Asian the Asian spinach Kang Kong. And that's uh, something you can harvest just off all the time. So let's keep moving through. Hero here. <laughs> <laughs> Superhero Marty, a legend. Sharing stream out for sure. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know, I wouldn't put myself in the hero mode, but I haven't got my cape on yet. But um, uh, I do appreciate it. And, you know, the whole thing is really is just getting this knowledge out. And, and sometimes it's just inspiring people. So a lot of people have got the knowledge to do this, and they just, you know, so this might be some type of depression set in, there's some type of reason. And then, you know, I get people write to me, I just started gardening again because I just saw how passionate you were. And uh, I just want to start again. And now I'm back into it, which is really cool. Uh, used for microgreens too, yeah, and baby leaf. So, um, you know, you can grow like uh, basil. So basil would be a really good time if you're in the hot places now uh, to grow out of that. And you can put more seeds in and you can harvest. So you do a tall one and you put one one week and one, one week and the next, and one week and the next, one week and the next. And then you can succession harvest you know you might have about 10 plants popping out of each one uh, that would be a really good idea for that type of thing uh, other types of uh, mediterranean herbs as well uh, in the hot times you can grow um, so i recommend just crushing up for calcium you can do uh, dolomite which is very cheap it's got calcium magnesium you can uh, liquefy that down and use a calcium or you can do even a cheaper method and just crush down. I've got a video that I, where we talked about how I crush down eggshells into a powder and use that uh, as a calcium. But uh, yeah, the, um, the magnesium, the calcium from dolomite uh, is really good and really quite cheap. Depending on where you buy it, obviously. Love this idea. I'm going to start saving bottles. Yeah, cool. And just remember, you just need some way to back it up. I had mine on a pole on the edge of the veranda at my place, and I just had like two two of them stacked beside each other. Uh, and that worked pretty good for me. had one growing lettuce in it and the other one growing uh, strawberries. And I used the worm tea um, to pull that off. Anyway, let me know uh, how the image looks and everything and the sounds coming through good. And uh, if you're enjoying the show, um, I'd love to know what, you, what you're thinking about it so far. And also, if you're going to consider maybe doing something like this or you've already done it before, uh, that's really cool. And, um, yeah, as Deb says here, please add a cue before your question. That just helps me uh, know that there's a question there. 
And also, um, you know, as we're doing these live shows more and more, which I am, it just builds up a really good habit to help produce a really good show and to get your answer not missed uh, as well. And we've got, I'll just go, I don't want to miss this one. Glenny, the garden, okay, brother, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, I'm really good, Glenny. A um, little bit, a little bit of sinus. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know I have these little allergy things and stuff sometimes but all good I'm really happy and just stoked to be here as I said I'd rather be here talking to you guys doing something like this than Netflix and uh, yeah and doing that type of thing I'd just rather be here build those connections and create the experience you know like I'm finding these live shows are really about experience and I'm working on getting the productions a little bit better each and every time so I believe that we're really getting there too. Alison Gilbert, I love how you've tried and tested these ideas and methods with the reality of little resources to make them happen on a household scale that most people can do. Your experience is invaluable. Well, thank you very much, Alison. I appreciate that. And 99% of the time, unless I've something really, really awesome, uh, I make sure that I've done it, I've tested it, I've trialed it, and that it works. <laughs> it's really important to uh, to do that, and there's so many people out there bringing out content. They're not even doing it just the purpose of bringing out a piece of content so they can try and make some money or something. That's uh, totally against what we're on for. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, I'll just make sure I'm going through here. Uh, great stuff, Marty. Thank you very much. Looks and sounds great. Wonderful. When I was moving around a lot in rental properties, I grew in buckets so I could take it all with me. Well, that's interesting. I know a lot of people, and I've done it too in the past, in those 10-gallon uh, buckets, the ones that I make um, the underground worm farms in, uh, they, they they make a pretty good, to be honest, yeah, pretty good portable garden. I've I got to admit that. And I've never tried stacking because they're pretty heavy, right? So I could imagine stacking three or four on top of each other uh probably be a bit heavy but you know a two liter uh bottle we might be able to get two or three on top of each other uh no problem who knows and if you've got a good way to tie it up like a pallet or something at the back uh yeah you could do it like that okay dude see i'll have to fight the husband for bottles he likes to cash them in we'll just tell him that he'll save more money by have food <laughs> He probably, if he's a good, a big meat eater, he might go, lettuce, oh, I don't like that stuff. I want the money, go buy some beer, or who knows. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just crack him over there with one of the bottles, you know. <laughs> See you later, mate. Oh, that's funny. All right, let's keep on rolling here. Ah, uh, yes. Made my afternoon. Well, thank you very much. It has made mine too, and we're here. Well, it's actually 7.53 uh, p.m. here. At the moment and as i said i'd rather be here chatting with you guys than be on netflix and i was going to have the full day off I, I broke i went into the facebook group and did some little comments in there and had a look in there and uh yeah went through sort of some of my youtube analytics and some emails and things like that but you know i got out this morning and went out with a friend to the markets i got the photo in there in the, in the posts um of, yeah my head at the markets did you check out my short that uploaded? No, I haven't, sorry. Um, to be honest, I don't really look at a lot of other people's content. Um, I, d I look at some other stuff to do with business and things like that. But uh, if it pops up in my feed, but I don't, I'm, honestly, I'm not really looking at shorts either very much. Um, yeah. So sorry about that. But if something like that pops up, I will have a look. Uh, you can always... Um, Put a link in the comments box down below and I'll check it out. All right, let's keep moving. YouTube is an ever evolving journey, mate. Don't worry, you got this. Thank you very much. Well, I'm just, you know, I think the experience is really cool and then working on creating and developing a better show also at the same time really helps. Helps me uh, create something better. And um, yeah, as we just keep sort of moving along. But as I said, I don't watch um a lot of i don't watch a lot of gardening stuff um unless it's related to you know some maybe some organic stuff i'll watch the little bits and pieces but you know i watch a little bit of surfing or uh, i'll watch you know a little bit of stuff on business or sometimes i watch something on cameras uh, things like that but i find that i'm just gardening and gardening and doing this stuff i'm outside gardening that i'm in here and i've got to sort of 
My brain's got to go somewhere else just for a little while, if that makes sense. Here we go. I am Hook from Aussie Grocer. Hey, mate, you got another... Is that a different channel? Uh, you've come in from there. I uh, haven't seen you for a while there, mate. Um, looking forward to seeing you. And if, yeah, if you're going to do anything, happy to get onto, uh, onto your channel as well and do a show with you. All right. Let's keep on moving through. <laughs> yeah, a bit of funny. Okay, this season, I've had the same problem with the vertical garden as I've had with all our gardens. Too much rain. I know, Stu. Um, that has been a problem. But we're going out of La Union now, and we're going to go probably into neutral, and who knows if we're going to move into the other side of things, uh, flip right on the other side and become really dry. We'll just have to wait and see. We'll probably know more by the end of uh, this month. I would say, and I, I, that's one thing where I do, I do watch a, a weather channel, it's called Wet New Zealand, uh, dot weatherzone.co, I think it is, or news, you type in New Zealand weather, best weather forecaster for Australia, uh, on YouTube as far as I'm concerned, and uh, they talk about all the long range forecasts for New Zealand and Australia, and show you all the maps up in the Pacific and things like that, let's keep moving forward. It's about removing the tap, brother. I'm missing something here. Uh, keep moving. Remember, put a big Q if you've got a question there, and um, I'd love to uh, put it up there. And I could watch all and learn from you all day in between gardening and watering my worms. <laughs> Thanks, Dev. It's nice to see you here. Uh, Hook's a legend, Marty. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I, you know, um, it's good to see him here. He's got another channel, obviously, come through. And, yeah, I... He said something about maybe going on his channel. I'd love to get you across too. Uh, Hook, if you want to drop me an email at some stage, we can do some little bit of a collaboration. I've got some other things uh, going on um, behind the scenes, building up community and working with uh, other, want to you know, collaborate more with Auss other Aussie YouTubers that are growing gardening, worm farming, permaculture, you know, into, um, I was going to say DIY, but, you know, into, what do you call it? When you got solo and all that stuff and everything going, I just can't. Someone let me know. <laughs> I've gone. I've gone back. My head, my brain just stopped working uh, for a second there. But um, yeah, off grid and connecting it all together, you know. So we'll get back to this uh, this bottle garden here, and we'll have another look at it again because a few people would have come in a bit later. And what we've done is um, I'm showing you an example. Now, there isn't a lot of video stuff that I can pull up and, and things like that. Um, maybe in the future I learn how to do a bit of a slideshow presentation. I'd be able to get three or four images, six images together, and we can I can learn how to slide them across and we go bang, 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 look at one, look at the next. So that's something that I'm looking into doing and try and find the best images uh, that I can. And so this one's a vertical bottle garden and they're all stacked on top of each other. The water flows out dude, through the bottom and then you know they've got they've got the plant growing out of the top, but I like them like this. It slots in like that. Pin hole on the top, nail hole on the top, drips down through, you cut a hole out of the side, big hole, so a lot of airflow, fill it full of compost, plant falls out the side, and then you just tie it to some type of pole, put it on some type of pallet, something like that, and you can use any size bottle. Use a food grade quality bottle and uh, plastic and then throw them away, you, you know, when you're finished, do a couple of crops with them. Put some tape, some paper tape around the bottom there to stop uh, any of the algae that forms. I, I did it a couple of times. The algae definitely does form up from the nutrient, especially when you're using more worm tea. Uh, the sunlight hits it and it doesn't affect the plant so much. It just looks a bit blah. So the brown tape or any type of tape that sticks onto it looks okay, uh, does the job. And the top bottle is you cut the top off like that and uh, that you fill that full of your worm tea liquid and your bottom bottle uh, it sits in it, sits in it, lids tied on and so the top's cut off and you pull that away, it's full of the nutrient and you just pour it back in top with your top bottle, the lids cut off. Does that make sense? If you've got any questions, um, please uh, fire away. I'm happy to answer any of those because we're looking at this one uh, right now and uh, you can see I've got the camera angle so I'm like, I'm looking <laughs> at, the, at the thing, oh, I'm quite, I'm quite chuffed with myself that I figured out how to do that as in the thumbnail. You know, 
<laughs> Actually, that would have made a better thumbnail. I need to smile more of my thumbnails, right? I'm so serious all the time. Like, and uh, i got to get that right, you know. I'm on the YouTube see the face. Like, <laughs> gets more reaction. And uh, sorry, I'm just being a bit of a, bit of a, no, I wouldn't say a hoodlum, bit of a um, jokester. Uh, anyway, we'll keep moving forward. Great content, Marty. Respect. Thank you very much. Um, let's keep moving through. A demo of me making the bottle garden would be great. I think I've got one, but I don't know if I'd repurpose it and bring it back. It's really old. And I might consider doing it um, when, the, when the season cools down a bit, uh, if people are still interested uh, in that. But as I said, there are lots of YouTube videos um, showing how to make it. They're just old, and um, they don't show them anymore. You know how they repeat videos through? Um, they're just out there sort of like sitting in the YouTube library sort of thing. So we need to get in there and search uh, vertical bottle gardens. Some people, mate, there was a bit of a um, trend later on down the line where apartments were making it and they were putting them in their windows. Yeah, and they were doing it more hydroponics so because it wasn't as dirty. But some were doing soil stuff and potting mixes and things, but the hydroponic ones. And they would have, so it would sit like that. So you see some and they have like a wick run down, right? So the wick runs down to there and then into there like that. And they were all apart like that. And they would be on some type of stand in front of a big window. And some of them would even like, they don't have windows. So they'd have lights, fluoro lights over the top of them. And then they would have a, have a wick running down uh, in between each one. I thought that was a pretty good idea, having the wick too. Because if you've got to have a pole, you can tie it on there, tie it on there, and, um, and then run a, a wick down. Sort of in between and that's just slowly uh really it's a slower watering system and good idea for uh, for hydroponic systems for sure really clean um and just growing in front of a window so really cool yes off grid that's it <laughs> thanks for the edit <laughs> um we've got a guy uh, mike i'm doing a um a meeting up with him next week uh yeah and he is like the off-grid guy and hopefully we're doing some collaborations with him he's got another channel um so we'll introduce that um if it all goes well through i don't want to go mention any names just yet but yeah uh mike's going to be uh coming on and hopefully on, onto his channel we're talking about some off-grid stuff um for sure a demo yep yeah, so we got that and is there any chance you'd be interested in interview on my channel marty i would be very interested you can go into um, with any, either of them, uh, uh, hook, no problem, um, I'd love to. So in my channel you can find, if you go to the about uh, and you click on a couple of things, you'll find my email there and uh, you can email. I'm pretty sure you've emailed me before but I just don't know if I've got yours again. And I really want to start collaborating with more channels and just bringing these, these, um, these communities tighter in. We just don't have, in Australia, uh, we, you know, we just don't have the population uh, and there's not as many people to collaborate with. So uh, we, we can struggle as less, you know, like we just don't grow as quick um, as the other ones. And, we, you know, we have a smaller audience if you've just got an Australian audience. So hopefully we can build up some international stuff at the same time. So, yeah, um, I would love to. And um, either one of any of your channels, brother. Uh, I'm not hook man. We, me, oh, sorry, we, we are brothers though. Okay, yeah, no worries. Um, happy to, happy to. Uh, just as I said, you go to the about uh, on my channel and you can pull up the email there and just email me and um, that'd be really great. And um, yeah, I'd love to talk to both of you. So let's uh, let's get it happening. And um, yeah, let's let's get this. Let's let's kick some some YouTube butt. I say. Anyway, we're coming back and we're looking at um, this bottle garden here. If you've got any more questions about it, uh, that would be you know I'm happy to answer them. And it's been really good uh, running through. I'm actually at night now, and I've got another light set up uh, up up here, and I've got an up light there, and all the light isn't beaming through that window. I've got to get a curtain on that window and starting to get this studio looking better so I can come in at night time before um, we didn't have the good light and so it was too grainy and pixelated and couldn't really run a good show. But um, this seems to be working quite well and my camera's connected up, it doesn't run out of battery, 
Uh, I can run the whole time. And as I said, I can do this, where I can, it'll, and it'll blur me out in the background and we can show things. And uh, really, really cool. And <laughs> that's just me having a bit of fun there. But, you know, um, yeah, so I just keep repurposing content as well. Blast from the past. I'll be doing some stuff in the backyard. And then next month, I am off to uh, off to uni, off to film school. And looking forward to um, maybe even working in with some of those guys there. Uh, they mentioned if I was a bit earlier, Mark from Self Sufficient Moment here, they would have come here and filmed the whole live show for the day. That would have been just insane. But we were running so hard to get everything done. I don't think we would have had much time to even to even talk, to be honest. Um, he arrived about 11 o'clock and didn't leave until the sun was going down. So, yeah, it was pretty crazy. But if you've got any more questions, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, we've got a little bit of time left. We generally run into uh, the hour at 50 minutes, 21 people watching. We're looking at the bottle garden here if you've come in late. So if you come in later, you might want to uh, scroll back to the beginning and watch the rerun. Uh, I talk about all the different ways that you can stack them on top of each other and use them. You can go into Pinterest and look um, up bottle gardening, have a look in uh, YouTube and just really search because there's so many different ones in the windows. Uh, there's ones on verandas, there's ones connected to uh, pallets, there's all different types of types of them. Uh, and then the website, the Willem, Willem Van Cotton, which is called desertification that's on one of the videos from the other day at a bottle gardening one and there's a link there you can follow that and uh you can you can get the uh information from the the legend himself the guy that bought this to the internet about 13 years ago and we have something amazing here thank you so much dc Yay, I don't have my soft I don't have the sound thing in my software where I pull up the artificial crowd but um Hopefully they pull up something like that where we can just go click and, and play that. But thank you, DC, for um, for the super chat. I really, really appreciate it. So what we're going to do now, guys, there's no more questions coming through. Um, we're going to um, start saying goodbye to each other. If uh, Aussie Gungerman, if you want to talk to me a little bit um, about the about the show, um, or what you want to do, um, you can drop me another question there. I'll hang around uh, for a little bit longer. Or just yeah, go to my about uh, tab, get my email and email, and we'll just we'll start talking, dude, and go from there. So say goodbye to each other. I'm gonna put some tunes on. This is what we always do towards the end here. We get a bit of music on, and I think I go for the chill music, and we'll try that. And I think it's like a yeah, it's like a light. I change it all the time. I'm sure this isn't the last song, last chill song that we played last time. <laughs> They've changed it again. How dare they do that to me? That's confusing. All right, let's go back. I'll find some, find something else to, to set it off with. Oh, there we go. That's getting a bit groovier now. <laughs> what else have we got here? Down tempo. Oh, that's a bit sad, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, now it's getting a bit depressing. I've got to have something a bit more. I've just, I've got to have something. Let's try some chill hop. I've never tried that before. Ooh. I like some jazz. Why don't they have a jazz or some country in there or something like that? It's just a match of more of the branding. But anyway, we'll go with that. And um, have I got a shirt yet? No, I didn't get through, unfortunately, to, um, I'll just turn this down a bit. I tried to get into, into Amazon um, to do merch. And I think because Amazon are just getting rid of heaps of people at the moment, I didn't get in. So yeah, we got to look at that down the line somewhere. Uh, unfortunately, that won't be happening for a little bit yet. Quinn, thanks, Marty. Have a good evening. Catch you next time. The next one. If I can, yeah. Thank you very much for coming in, mate. Always good to see you. Awesome. <laughs> I won't read them out. I'll just bring them across. <laughs> Remember, say goodbye to the people in here as well. Say goodbye to me. And uh, 
really nice. This is sort of a bit jazzy. Let's call it chill hop or something. <laughs> Respect to you too, brother. Thank you. All right, keep an eye open for uh, tomorrow's video. Got a new one coming out for you. Uh, I'll give you a bit of a surprise. You can hang around and uh, watch and check out what it is. Got to, actually, I've got videos lined up for every day for the next uh, till Wednesday, all lined up, ready to go. So, love the jazz, love the jazz. <laughs> so yeah, that's fun. And I'll be running live shows in between, things like that. We'll be definitely back Monday, who knows? I might even bring something out tomorrow um, if I'm on top of everything. Might even pop in here tomorrow night again. Uh, definitely not in the morning. Uh, I go, I'm off to church in the morning and then uh, I come back uh, in the evening. But much respect to you all, my friends. You guys are awesome. Um, just love being here and connecting with the community. And uh, yeah, it's just brilliant. So I'm going to end the stream now. And uh, have a great evening or morning, wherever you are, and blessings to you all. Bye for now.